Welcome back to Any Recapped. Make sure to subscribe to Any Recapped and hit the bell icon to be the first one to watch our new recaps. Let's begin. In a futuristic city, an emotionless blonde boy called Odo is riding tram somewhere. Suddenly, a crazy man bursts into another compartment with a small artifact that enables him to shoot fire. He yells how he will find something called the Divine Gate and then remake the world. Once upon a time, three separate worlds called Celestia, Terrasia, and Helistia merged into one and magical abilities of six different elements appeared. Those who can use those abilities are called adapters and some of them can see the Divine Gate, which can make all wishes come true. Otto enters the compartment and stands in the insane man's way. Getting angry, Themen attacks him, but the boy blocks his fire attacks and cuts him with a blade made of water, defeating him. A red-haired boy called Akane and a green-haired girl called Midori enter the compartment and say they're from the World Council. Midori uses a device to transport Akane, Odo, and the unconscious attacker to the zone, a dimension separate from everything else. While Midori calls someone to take the attacker away, Akane tries to stop the mysterious Odo and talk to him, but he simply walks out of the zone. Odo remembers his parents getting killed in the past and suddenly sees a red-eyed little boy. The boy tells him the Divine Gate is within his reach, but he doesn't want to reach out to it. Before Odo can say anything, the little boy passes through him like a ghost and disappears. Akane and Midori arrive at the Academy, dedicated to training adapters and their classmates are impressed by them capturing the tram attacker. In a large hall, a group of people is talking about the attack in the tram. The group is actually a secret military agency called the Knights of Round and their leader is a golden-haired man called Arthur. Arthur is interested in Odo and wants to recruit him into the Adapter Academy. At the Adapter Academy, Akane and Midori are told that Arthur wants them to persuade Odo to join the Academy. Learning his name, they realize he was in the news four years ago for killing his abusive parents. In town, a blue-haired girl called Undine approaches Odo. She is one of the advisors from the Adapter Academy and tells him he would be happier among other adapters, instead of in his regular high school where everyone avoids him. Listening to Undine, Otto ends up in Arthur's office, where Arthur gives him a driver and artifact that can help him control his water-based ability. However, Otto doesn't think power by itself can change anything and leaves. Outside, Akane and Midori approach him and do their best to be nice to him. Midori tells Otto he can wish for anything if he finds the Divine Gate, but Otto tells her he doesn't have anything to wish for. When Akane tries telling him he doesn't believe the rumors surrounding him, Otto tells him he really did kill his parents, leaving him shocked. Leaving the academy, Odo sees the red-eyed little boy from before and tells him he knows he didn't really kill his parents. In the past, Odo's parents were proud of his little brother and his talent as an adapter, while they abused Odo and only gave him leftovers to eat. At Arthur's office, a god called Loki visits him. He wears half of a mask and looks forward to observing Arthur, while Arthur seems to dislike him. Akane, Midori, and Undine appear at Odo's house and ask him to go to the academy with them, but Odo refuses. This annoys Akane making him leave by himself. Wandering around a poor district of the city, Akane thinks about his father. His father, called Pavlov, was known as one of the geniuses of Divine and worked together with the World Council. Even though the Council told him his father died in an accident, Akane doesn't believe them, so he wants to find the Divine Gate and make a wish to learn the truth. Back at Odo's house, the red-eyed boy tells Otto he might be able to get along with Akane, since they both lost their parents. The boy tells him his life will never change if he never tries doing anything. In a poor district, a king comes across a beggar boy and they meet Odo by chance. In the district, a driver in the shape of a robot is patrolling the street. While the driver is passing by a cane, Odo and the boy, Loki snaps his fingers from somewhere and the robot starts attacking everyone on the street using his drill arms. In the commotion, the beggar boy is trapped in the rubble. His father appears and tries helping him, but suddenly gets a panic attack and can't move anymore. Having been summoned by the World Council, Midori arrives at the scene. While Akane and Midori fight the driver robot using their own drivers, Otto heads towards the trap boy. He activates the orb Arthur gave him and summons a water-based sword. Using its power, he extinguishes the flames where the boy is trapped. Having defeated the robot, Akane and Midori help Otto save the boy, who reunites with his father. Talking to third-eyed boy again, Otto remembers his past. It turns out his brother was actually the one who killed his parents. After that happened, Odo saw the Divine Gate for the first time before his brother left, telling him he didn't want to see him ever again. That night, Arthur is visited by a blue-haired man called Santa Claus who gives him a crown. Later, Odo visits Arthur and tells him he will join the Academy after all. Arthur then tells Odo, Akane, and Midori he has finally obtained the key that will enable him to open the Divine Gate. 
Sometime later, a man wearing a purple hat called Oz meets up with Arthur and Loki. Arthur tells them he has obtained the key to the Divine Gate, and while Oz is concerned about what will happen if the gate is opened, Loki is intrigued. That night, the students hold a welcoming party for Oto. He has trouble fitting in and accepting the students' kindness, but manages to get to know everyone. After the party, Akane and Midori are cleaning up alone. While they're talking, Midori tells Akane she wants to become the first to open the Divine Gate no matter what. On the first day of high school, Midori and her best friend Alina ended up in the same class together. However, Midori was getting along with everyone, while Alina didn't make any friends at all. One day, Midori's classmates invited her to go to a summer festival with them. Wanting to invite Alina too, Midori asked her, but Alina answered she doesn't want to go with her other classmates, because the only friend she needs is Midori. This makes Midori uneasy, and she ends up telling Alina that being her only friend is too much of a responsibility, which makes Alina run away. At home, Midori texts Alina to apologize and ask her to go to the summer festival with her, but Alina answers that she doesn't want to go anymore. She decided to find the Divine Gate and make a wish to make Midori stay her number one friend forever. Later, going to the summer festival with her other friends, Midori hears a girl went missing in Mount Hagakir, where she heard the Divine Gate was seen. Realizing that girl might be Alina, Midori runs towards the mountain as fast as she can. Arriving there, Midori saw the Divine Gate in the mountains but never saw Alina again. In the present, she tells Akane she is sure Alina is waiting for her at the Divine Gate. The next morning, the red-eyed boy tells Odo he knows he has a wish for the Divine Gate, and he can't keep hiding it forever. He wants his wish to come true, but he is afraid it won't. Meanwhile, Midori decides to look up Odo's file at the library, but the computer she is searching on denies her access to his file, saying it's restricted. In a laboratory, one of the geniuses of Divine shows Arthur a humanoid autonomous driver created to protect him. Sneaking into the empty advisor's room, Akane and Midori manage to steal Undane's authorization pass just before she arrives. Returning to the library, they use the pass to access Odo's file and notice he is somehow connected to an incident called Blue Christmas that happened on Christmas two years before. Even though it is publicly known that the incident happened in a shopping mall caught on fire, they find out that was a lie and that the incident was actually a killing spree caused by two men who were never caught. They read that one of the murderers was a blonde boy who used a knife made of water, which is why Otto was a suspect. However, there wasn't enough evidence to apprehend him. There was also another suspect, but his file is even more classified than Otto's, and the two of them can't access it. Suddenly, the lights turn off and a short blonde boy appears together with a swarm of drone-like autonomous drivers. A cane recognizes him as Brunner, one of the members of Knights of Round. Brunner tells them he got an alert that someone tried to access the Blue Christmas file, but decides to tell them the whole truth. Meanwhile, Schrodinger, a masked man who is one of the geniuses of Divine, is observing Otto using a surveillance driver. He sends Otto a message and sets up a meeting with him, telling him he knows about Blue Christmas and who he really is. Schrodinger remembers the night of Blue Christmas. On that night, not wearing a mask back then, he found himself in a shopping mall, when all the lights suddenly went out. A hooded boy appeared and started killing innocent shoppers with swords made of water, for no apparent reason. His victims were trying to run away, but the boy made ice walls, trapping them all. Scrovedinger was watching all this, laughing maniacally and thinking it's beautiful. He felt the world was boring and gloomy, but the killer fascinated him. The coated boy approached him and realized he is on his side, but cut his mouth anyway. He told him they will go to a perfect world together. He froze the lower part of his face, before jumping out a window. Inspired by the killer, Schrodinger made a sword out of ice and started killing the rest of the people. Telling all this to Akane and Midori, Brunner swears he will uncover the truth of what happened and avenge his father who was killed that night. He to Akane and Midori to help him prove Otto was guilty. Akane is outraged, but Midori agrees to help since she believes she can prove Otto's innocence. Tracking Otto using a social network called Friend Log, Midori and the others head to where he is. At the ruins of the shopping mall destroyed in the Blue Christmas incident, Otto meets up with Schrodinger. Observing Otto, Schrodinger thinks he is different than how he was on Blue Christmas. Suddenly, Brunner drops down from the sky together with Midori and Akane, carrying a huge hammer-like driver. Schrodinger sends drones to attack Brunner, but Akane and Midori fight them instead, while Brunner rushes towards Schrodinger. Fighting Otto, Schrodinger realizes he isn't the person he thought he was and gets angry, asking him where the real Otto is. He calls for the autonomous driver we saw before, a female-looking robot called Samadair. Otto and Brunner fight against the robot and manage to defeat it. Scrodinger then leaves while Otto yells at him to tell him where the other killer is. 
that the killer turns out to be observing all this and we see he is actually Ono's runaway brother. Some time later, the Adapter Academy students travel to an abandoned area for special training. Ono, Akane, and Midori arrive at their destination, together with a cocky gray-haired boy called Jinji, a cheerful long-haired girl called Hikari, and a gloomy black-haired girl called Yukari. Exiting the station, they are greeted by a busy girl with a horse face mask. The students are weirded out, but the girl takes off the mask and reveals herself as a beautiful woman called Bedivere, a member of the Knights of Round. It turns out another knight called Yuane tricked her into wearing the mask, telling her she will look cool in it. Bedivere takes them to a temple deep in the forest, where they meet up with the other knights who include Bruner and a gray-haired man called Palamides. The training consists of various strange challenges, like sumo and quizzes. When Akane takes a break to wash his face in the river, he notices a local girl watching him. The two of them talk and she tells him his necklace is pretty. When Otto and Midori arrive, the girl hides before they see her. That night, the students gather in a tent with Bedivere, and she admits that even she doesn't know the details about why they're doing this special training. After that, she tells the students their next mission is returning to the train station on foot. On their way back, they see people who start transforming into demonic animals and attacking them. Yukari explains to the others that the people are seconds, people who gain power by crossing the border between species in order to reach the Divine Gate. Deciding to follow their mission objective, the students start running towards the station while fighting the seconds. The girl Akane met in the forest appears before him and attacks him, turning out to be a second herself. She tells him she has to kill him since her friends saw her talk to him, because they defied the World Council and lived in hiding. Her people were called the Defiers, and the World Council exiled them to this place. Suddenly, Odo and Midori appear and separate the two. Akane admits he never thought about what's outside the city and what other people's lives are like. He wants to help the girl and the others, but the girl just attacks him and tells him his pity is pointless. When she prepares to kill Akane, Bedivere and other knights arrive and save him, killing the girl. Akane is shocked, and the knights proceed to massacre all the seconds. With her dying breath, the second girl tells Akane that he is kind after all and that she wants him to be happy. Akane cries and asks himself if it truly was inevitable to kill the seconds. We find out about Arthur's past. He was born in Terrastia, but his parents abandoned him and he had no one to raise him. One Christmas Eve, he saw the Divine Gate and passed through it. On the other side, he emerged in a beautiful world called Celestia, but he was still lonely. One day, he met a cheerful blue-haired boy. When the boy realized Arthur is all alone in the world, he took him to his house to live with him. Introducing himself as Santa Claus, he announced that Arthur is now his best friend. When the Divine Gate previously opened and the three worlds merged, the world was in chaos. This happened because everyone only cared about their world and themselves. In the present, Arthur gathers the Knights of Round, the Adapter Academy's advisors, and six talented adapters. Otto, Midori, Akane, Jinji, Hikari, and Yukari. He is preparing to go on an expedition to find and open the Divine Gate, and he wants them to join him. Before Otto leaves to meet up with Arthur, the red-eyed boy talks to him again. When Otto tells the boy that even if the Divine Gate is fake, it's better to try to reach it than do nothing at all, the boy realizes how much Otto has changed. Meanwhile, Oz is surprised by Arthur's actions, but Loki is entertained and looks forward to what he will do. In the past, Loki met Arthur when he was just a boy. Talking to Loki, Arthur told him he wants to become the king of the world and bring peace to it, after which his best friend called Santa Claus will bring happiness to everyone in the world. Hearing this, Loki tells him he will also do his best to make Arthur happy, since a god must be there for the king. On top of a building, Oz performs a ritual and talks to the Scandinavian gods. The students are determined, Midori wants to find her friend, Kane wants to find out what happened to his father, and Odo wants to stop being passive and try to fulfill his wish. Soon, Arthur and his party prepare to begin the expedition. Arthur reveals he intends to completely destroy the Divine Gate and return the world to its true state. Arthur then transports everyone to the zone. Walking through the zone, they travel through different gates and landscapes until Arthur suddenly tells everyone to stop. A huge number of autonomous drivers appear, and it turns out Loki sent them to attack Arthur and his party. The Knights of Round fight fiercely, enabling everyone to run away into a large building. However, inside the building, there's six people waiting for Arthur and the others. It turns out they are wreathed Scandinavian gods wanting to challenge Arthur and the others. The Knights of Round hold off the gods while Arthur and the others advance through the next gate. The knights fight to their best ability using their different drivers and just barely manage to hold off the gods long enough for Arthur and the others to escape through a gate. However, the knights are no match for the gods and most of them end up dying in battle. 
Even though Oz summoned the gods to protect the gate, he thought Arthur and the others wouldn't fight back and he didn't want any of them to die. Prepared to bear the sin of being at fault for his knight's deaths, Arthur continues his journey with his party and finally reaches the Divine Gate. In the laboratory, Loki prepares a humanoid driver, his last trump card against Arthur. After the fight with the gods, a blonde knight called Lance and Bruyner are the only ones left alive. The gods tell them there is no more reason to fight since Arthur reached the gate. Just when Arthur passes through the Divine Gate, Loki's humanoid driver tackles him and the gates close on the two of them. Inside, Arthur fights the driver using his sword, but the replica is powerful and uses four different elements against him. Outside, Lance joins Odo, Akane, and Midori, who are trying to open the gate again. Inside, once Arthur gets completely exhausted, Loki teleports to him. It turns out he was working with the geniuses of Divine to stop Arthur. Loki gives Arthur two choices. He can become his personal king or he can die die. Arthur immediately chooses death and Loki accepts his choice. Before Loki leaves, Arthur stands up and starts powering up his sword, ready to take attack one last time. Soon, the Divine Gate opens and Arthur reunites with Lance and the students. They're happy to see Arthur alive, but it turns out Loki is manipulating him and he suddenly stabs Lance. The Divine Gate closes and the whole room starts falling apart, making the students crash through the floor, while a gigantic blue pillar rises from the ground. Arthur is sitting on a throne on top of the pillar, most of his heart having been stolen by Loki. However, a tiny bit of his heart still exists and Loki talks to him, telling him he has made him a king, just like he wanted. In the city, the World Council explains covers up everything that happened. For summoning the Scandinavian gods, Oz is judged by the six saints, entities who govern the world. Loki arrives and tells them both Arthur and his knights are dead, which shocks Oz. He even lies to him that the students are dead, making Loki feel filthy. At a secret hideout, the three advisors from the Adapter Academy meet up with Akane, Odo, Midori, Jinji, Yukari, and Hikari, and bring them food and medicine. Santa Claus is also helping them and thinks it's dangerous for them to reveal themselves, since the World Council thinks Arthur is a traitor and the students were with him during the incident. Visiting the geniuses of Divine, Loki tells them it's time for the Twilight of Judgment to begin. It turns out that among the geniuses is Akane's father, who hasn't died after all. A green-haired girl called Shakespeare is going to lead Loki's project. Meanwhile, talking to a girl with pigtails, Oz is nervous and scared thinking he is at fault for the students dying. Hearing that Midori is among those students, the girl with pigtails is shocked. At the hideout, Santa Claus explains that the World Council has covered up all kinds of things, such as the truth behind Blue Christmas, Akane's father and Midori's friend. He tells the students that Loki actually controls the Council, together with a group of researchers known as the Geniuses of Divine. He thinks Loki wants to open the gate and start the whole world from scratch, so he can keep being entertained by watching people struggle to reach the Divine Gate. This is why Arthur wanted to destroy the gate, so he can ruin Loki's plan and give the world and its people their peace. Later, Jinji, Yukari, and Hikari tell the others they want to reveal themselves to the World Council, thinking Arthur and Santa are lying to them. However, Otto, Akane, and Midori don't agree and want to return to the gate to save Arthur and find out the secrets the Council is hiding. Hearing this, Jinji and the two girls leave. The next day, Loki meets up with Jinji, Yukari, and Hikari, and asks them to tell him where the others are hiding. Jinji leads him to the hideout, but it turns out Santa changed his memories before Hamst, and he thinks the hideout is in a different place. However, Jinji thinks of an idea. He approaches the Adapter Academy's advisors and tells them that the Council found Santa's hideout. Thinking they are rescuing the students, the advisors lead both Jinji and Loki to the real hideout. Arriving there, Loki traps Santa, Akane, Odo, and Midori and surrounds them with autonomous drivers. Exiting the hideout, Santa confronts Jinji and the girls with an explosive baseball bat. Causing huge explosions, he distracts Jinji, Hikari, and Yukari, while Odo, Akane, and Midori escape through an underground tunnel, together with the advisors. Somewhere else, Loki makes Shakespeare start writing a play using a driver shaped like a pen. Casting a spell, she teleports Odo, Akane, and Midori to a theater stage. There, they are met by three actors called Hamlet, Macbeth, and Othello. As she writes, Shakespeare's words fly into the air, and the three students are forced to act out her play. While Akane is acting, his father, Pavlov, suddenly appears in a mask and tells him he will help him escape. Taking him to a place where Loki can't see them, Pavlov tells Akane he had to leave his family for the greater good, but that now he is going to return to them. Similarly, Midori finds herself in a scene from her past and meets Alina who starts crying and apologizing for being selfish and then disappearing. Odo also meets someone important to him, his younger brother. 
He tells Otto he is the only one who can understand him and Otto starts getting suspicious, thinking that person is not his real brother. Similarly, when Midori shows Elena two charms with their faces on them, Elena doesn't recognize them and Midori realizes something is wrong. Akan also realizes his father is a fake. When his father tells him he gave up on his research and dreams to come back to his family, Akane knows this can't be true, since his father would do anything to achieve his dreams, even abandon his son. At that moment, Akane's father, Alina, and Odo's brother reveal themselves to be Othello, Macbeth, and Hamlet. However, it turns out that the real Alina, Akane's father, and Odo's brother are all arriving, so Loki makes Shakespeare undo her spell, eager to see what will happen. Inside of Arthur's heart, Loki appears and shows him Santa is arriving to help him. Somewhere else, Oda wakes up in the blue tower leading to the divine gate and sees the little boy he always sees. Meanwhile, Akane finds himself in a strange place nearby, where a huge number of autonomous drivers attack him. Isn't also in another area of the tower where she suddenly sees the real Elena. Elena is happy to see Midori and runs towards her, but Midori doesn't believe it's really her. While the Kani is fighting off the autonomous drivers, Akane's father arrives and destroys them all at once. In front of the blue tower, the three advisors arrive. Not believing he is his real father, Akane attacks him, but Pavlov tells him details about his birth and convinces him he is legitimate. Pavlov tells Akane he needs to go back and give up on reaching the Divine Gate. He says he helped stopping Arthur and the Knights because he couldn't let the gate be destroyed, since the balance between worlds can't be maintained without it. Akane is angry because Pavlov would kill someone for the greater good. He rejects him and tells him he will go to the gate and change the world, so Pavlov decides to fight him. Inside Arthur's heart, it is revealed that Loki's plan is having Odo and the others open the Divine Gate, after which he will make a wish to redo the world from scratch. Meanwhile, Genji and the others are confronted by the Six Saints. They tell him they don't trust Loki and Oz is useless, so they need him. Inside Arthur's consciousness, Loki tells Arthur he put a curse on him to make him his, but Arthur is still managing to resist by hiding his true heart. Meanwhile, Santa is hurrying towards the Divine Gate. He is found by one of the Scandinavian gods, but he manages to escape from her. At Oz's house, he is surprised to see that Alina, who is his attendant, is gone. At the tower, Elena reveals she has the same charms as Midori, convincing her she really is her friend. Midori wants to apologize, but Elena says it's fine because she has changed, found friends, and a place she belongs to. She wants Midori to forget about what happened in their past and stop pursuing the Divine Gate. Suddenly, one of the Scandinavian gods appears behind them. Meanwhile, the red-eyed boy leads Odo somewhere, telling him the other two will follow him when they fall into despair. Undane appears and joins the two of them. Nearby, Akane is fighting Pavlov, until one of the Scandinavian gods appears behind them too. Pavlov hacks the autonomous drivers around them and makes them take Akane away, while he fights the Scandinavian god. He tells Akane he should follow the path he thinks is right. Controlling a huge number of drivers, Pavlov transforms them into a hand and attacks the god with it. However, the god soon destroys the hand and pierces Pavlov with his sword. Somewhere else, Midori finds herself trapped by the Scandinavian god. When the god throws a spear at Midori, Elena appears and protects her with her body. Having seen Elena and Pavlov die, Midori and Akane fall into despair. When Oz arrives, he sees Elena dead. At the Divine Gate, Loki laughs, exclaiming that now both Akane and Midori have found the key to the gate, since they have experienced despair. Meanwhile, the red-eyed boy leads Otto into a room where his little brother is waiting for him. The same boy also appears to Akane and Midori for the first time, showing them what Otto is doing. Ever since his brother left, Otto has been suppressing his emotions and carrying his brother's sin as his own. Before Otto's little brother became an adapter, their parents abused both of them. They used to tie the little brother to a tree in the ring and tell Otto they'll let him go once he becomes an adapter. Not wanting to watch his brother suffer any longer, Otto began rebelling against his parents and directing their anger towards him on purpose. One day, Otto's brother set fire to their house, but Otto took the blame for him and their parents beat him up and threw him out. That was when Otto's brother decided to kill their parents. To him, it was more painful watching Otto get punished than getting punished himself and Otto always protecting him was a burden to him. Before he killed their parents, he went into Odo's room to strangle him, but once he saw his eyes were peaceful and accepting, he ran away. That night, he saw the Divine Gate and became an adapter. Odo's brother wanted Odo to tell him they will run away together that night, but Odo tells him he didn't want to run away because he thought they might one day go back to being a happy family. Angrily saying he won't let Odo continue shouldering his sins and killings, Odo's brother brings out two water swords. However, Otto doesn't want to fight him and he keeps dodging his brother's powerful attacks. 
Meanwhile, the gods prepare to enter the building and attack the students, but Oz appears before them. He regrets he summoned them and decides he will take back the power he offered to them, even if he dies. Summoning a giant flame dragon, he attacks the gods. Inside, Odo's brother prepares to deal a kill and blow. However, Undane comes between them and the attack hits her. Seeing Undane's sacrifice, Odo unleashes his power and attacks his brother. Odo's brother is satisfied Odo finally showed his true feelings, so he leaves telling Odo the next time they see each other will be the last one. Undane Lucically turns out to be still alive and she is glad she was able to protect Odo. While the other instructors watch over her, Odo, Midori, and Akane advance towards the Divine Gate, led by the Red-Eyed Boy. They see the Divine Gate's true form, a giant scale balancing hope and despair. The Red-Eyed Boy reveals he is actually the key that guides people towards the gate, but only those who have experienced despair. Meanwhile, Santa finally reaches the top of the Blue Tower and finds Loki together with the cursed Arthur. Loki explains that Arthur actually hated this world because he was left all alone in it. Santa tells him everyone has a light and a dark side, but that Loki took the freedom of choice away from Arthur, which is why he is determined to bring Arthur back. Santa manages to approach Arthur and ask him what he really wants, but Arthur says nothing and just pierces his chest with his sword. However, this creates the chance for Santa to enter Arthur's heart. Arthur is shocked because he wounded Santa, but Santa brings him a golden cross, an artifact inside which Arthur hid most of his heart. However, Arthur says it's already too late, and that he has decided what he wants to do. Throwing Santa out of his heart, Arthur tells him he will protect the world, so Santa can bring happiness to it. Meanwhile, in front of the Divine Gate, Odo and the others finally approach the gate. Suddenly, the Scandinavian gods show up and tell them to stop. Since they're all beaten up and don't even have their drivers, Odo and the others prepare to attack them. Outside, Oz looks old and withered, having been able to get back the power he offered to the gods and weakening them. The red-eyed boy becomes gigantic and tells the gods that humans have the right to change the world as much as gods do, because even gods make mistakes. With the boy's help, Odo, Akane, and Midori manage to drive out the gods. Suddenly, Jinji appears, telling them the Divine Gate shouldn't be used for personal reasons, and that the World Council should use it to govern the world. He thinks the world is cruel and not everyone gets what they want or deserve, but they need the council to make the chaotic world look like a normal one. Odo, Akane, and Midori then realize that people need to change themselves if they want to be happy. They decide not to go beyond the gate for their selfish reasons, realizing people are stronger when they have something more important than themselves. The red-eyed boy accepts their resolutions and disappears along with the divine gate. Suddenly, Loki appears in front of them together with Arthur. Arthur attacks with overwhelming force, bringing the whole tower down with him and making the path to the divine gate disappear. In Arthur's heart, Arthur tells Loki he can't make Hope disappear from this world. Lance appears from the rubble and tells Odo, Akane, and Midori that none of the Knights of Round died because they were saved by a greater power. They swear they will get Arthur back. A gate opens and Otto and his friends pass through it back into the city. Having found out a lot about themselves, the students continue to train to become stronger adapters together with the Knights of Round. Thank you so much for staying until the end. Make sure to subscribe to any recap for more similar videos. Bye!